history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. Isn't it good to work for a place that has a sense of history? And indeed it is. See, taking the president from the spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at clicktohouston.com. KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. The accused gunman in the Bel Air High School shooting appears in court. Why prosecutors agree he should stay behind bars. Legal battle lawsuits filed in the deadly explosion in Northwest Terrace County. The evidence they're trying to preserve and who is scheduled to enter that site today. Traffic nightmare, major road construction starting tonight that could cause problems for your commute, how long the roads will be closed, and where you can find detours. But first, breaking news right now involving the coronavirus. Delta has just announced it will suspend all U.S.-China flights starting February 6th through April 30th. Another major airline carrier, American Airlines, also announcing it will halt flights starting today. This comes after the virus has killed more than 200 people. Coming up in just a few minutes, a local congressman talks about the coronavirus. He is also speaking to health officials in our community. Developing right now, the student accused of a deadly shooting at Bel Air High School will stay in jail. That is the very latest developments coming out of a court hearing that was earlier this morning. As we've reported, a 16-year-old student shot and killed 19-year-old senior Cesar Cortez. This all happened a little more than two weeks ago. Classes, uh, class schedules rather, have since returned to normal with extra security measures in place. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Andy Sirota. Good morning, I'm Tania Wright. Channel 2's Vincent Crivelli has been covering this story all morning long. He joins us now live from the courthouse in downtown Houston. Vincent, good morning. Tanaya, this morning, a judge weighed the pros and cons of keeping the accused shooter in custody. They determined for now the teenager will remain behind bars. And at this moment, it's an ongoing investigation. We'll conduct our investigation, we'll have a comment. The mother of the accused Bel Air High School shooter walks out of the juvenile detention facility without her son. Today, a judge ruled the 16-year-old was a danger to the community and himself. The teenager is accused of shooting and killing 19-year-old Cesar Cortez at Bel Air High School on the 14th. Today's hearing determined if the accused shooter would be released to his mother or remain in custody. During the hearing, the defense presented no argument. However, the prosecution argued the teenager was a danger to society. The judge ultimately ruled in favor of the prosecution, keeping the teen in custody for at least two weeks. 
And there will be another hearing in two weeks to reevaluate the situation to see if the accused shooter then can be released to his mother. Stay with Channel 2 for the latest. Reporting live downtown, Vincent Crivelli, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Vincent. Lawyers representing residents and victims' families in the Watson Grinding and Manufacturing Facility explosion say that they were forced to file an emergency motion to stop the city of Houston from removing evidence once the city takes over that scene. ATF officials have been investigating that explosion site for the past week now, and they have now wrapped up their investigation. Now the city is expected to take over the scene and conduct their own investigation. Lawyers don't object to that investigation, but they are asking the city not to remove any evidence during their investigation. During a hearing today, a judge granted the motion the lawyers had requested. And we have to protect against any removal of any material evidence. Our job is to conduct a full investigation and identify all potential parties for our client clients. Yesterday, Harris County also filed a lawsuit against Watson Grinding and Manufacturing Facility. In Fort Bend County, a trial is set to get underway later this morning for the man charged in the 2017 shooting death of an eight-year-old girl. Jacoby Payton is accused of killing Damari Atkins. Atkins was shot as she sat in the back seat of her mother's car after a crash on Fuquay and the Beltway. She was rushed to the hospital where she died. This case, ladies and gentlemen, involves not only an enormous tragedy because of the loss of a child, but even more so because the cause of her death was a violent, vicious, and senseless act on the part of the defendant, Jacoby Payton. We will update you on the latest in this case as it develops both here on the air and online. We're working to learn if charges are going to be filed against two men after a 14-year-old girl claims they drugged her and sexually assaulted her. According to deputies, the alleged incident happened at about 11 o'clock last night in Northwest Harris County. Investigators say that teen was found in that car with two men in their 20s right on the Northwest Freeway in Fry Road. They say they were responding to a call of a runaway when that girl was found. A big traffic alert to tell you about that will cause you some problems. All main lanes of the West Loop will be shut down in both directions at the Southwest Freeway starting tonight. Let's take a live look now at that area from our Transtar cameras. You can see barrels and other equipment out there as TxDOT gets ready to shut down that area. Construction is scheduled to start at 9 o'clock tonight and last until Monday at 5 a.m. The closure will continue every weekend until February 24th. Crews are using this time to hang beams to widen connector ramps. We've got ways you can get around this mess on our website, click to Houston.com. And that is going to be a huge mess over the weekend. Yeah, and let's hope that area at least stays dry so that folks can kind of navigate their their way around without worrying about additional problems. I Britta. know. Right. And if we have dry weather, we can get the work done because mm -hmm. it needs to get done. So let's get it done quickly. Right. Exactly. Uh, let's take a live look outside. We are dry right now. Kind of a gloomy lunch hour, but we'll see a few breaks of sunshine as we go into the afternoon. That is a live look over downtown. Uh, currently on exact track radar, we're completely dry, but we're dealing with the cloud cover because this weather system just to the south of us. Most of that rain now pushing well off to the north and east. And we're going to keep it nice and dry all the way through the weekend. So get ready for that. 54 degrees at Bush Airport right now. We're still in the upper 40s in Huntsville and Navasota. 55 at Hobby Airport, 56 in Pearland, and temperatures in Galveston in the mid to upper 50s. We're not going to warm up dramatically from this point. We're talking maybe 5 degrees. We'll top off pretty close to 60 with mostly cloudy skies. If you have plans for tonight, we'll start to clear out the skies, and that will allow our temperatures to drop. In fact, we'll get down to the 40s by 10 p.m., so keep those jackets with you. Because of clear skies, you know what that means, Andy sunshine is on the way. We'll take a look at your weekend forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Britta, thanks so much. Congressman Al Green is in southwest Houston this morning to discuss rumors surrounding the coronavirus. The congressman took a tour of the Jusco Shopping Center on Bel Air in Chinatown. Rumors that all, an employee at the store had come down with the coronavirus made the rounds on social media and hurt business. Congressman Green says there could be legal trouble for those who spread rumors about the virus. This is a time for us to deal with facts and not fear. Uh, the facts are that the business is open, no confirmed cases, and people who are found to spread these malicious rumors may be prosecuted. 
As you just heard the congressman say, the Houston Health Department also reiterating there are no confirmed cases of the virus in the city. The Senate impeachment trial of President Trump could end as early as tonight or even Saturday. Republicans are now confident they have the votes to block any new witnesses. NBC's Jennifer Johnson has the very latest from Washington. Republican senators hoping this will be the day to acquit President Trump and end his impeachment trial. But first, one final showdown on whether to present additional evidence and witnesses, a vote Democrats already appear to have lost. This is going to be an enormous stain on the United States Senate if today goes as expected. We're going to have a trial with no witnesses. The GOP secured enough votes to block new witnesses after Tennessee Senator Lamar Alexander decided against hearing additional testimony, writing the president's behavior in the Ukraine controversy was inappropriate but does not meet the United States Constitution's high bar for an impeachable offense. White House lawyers calling for an end. A verdict, a final judgment of acquittal, would be the best thing for our country. Republican Senators Susan Collins and Mitt Romney wanted to call witnesses, but even with Lisa Murkowski, the vote would be a tie, and Chief Justice John Roberts has already been seen as unwilling to intervene. Democrats proposed a limited number of witnesses, including former National Security Advisor John Bolton. According to the New York Times, sources say his forthcoming book alleges the president tied aid to Ukraine to an investigation of the Bidens. This can be done very quickly. This could be done, I think, effectively. President Trump in Iowa last night predicting his re-election. We will make sure that they face another crushing defeat. Right? But first, the president faces his day of judgment in the U.S. Senate. Republicans are hoping to wrap this up tonight or tomorrow, bringing an end to the impeachment process that began last fall. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. NBC will provide a special report scheduled in about an hour from now, starting at noon. You can watch it live right here on Channel 2, as well as our website, clicktohouston.com. All right, it's Friday now, but everyone is looking forward to Sunday night, of course, because it is Super Bowl 54. Right, football fans, of course, continue to flock to Miami to see who it's going to be, the 49ers or the Chiefs. Channel 2 sports reporter Ari Alexander is in South Beach, where he caught up with one Texan who's going to enjoy the big game with the fans. DeAndre Hopkins is out in Miami enjoying all of the festivities ahead of Sunday night's game. But, you know, he's not too thrilled because he wishes he was the one playing on Sunday. It's great to see all the people. Uh, you know, I'm a fan of uh, football, you know, so to see, uh, you know, the event and, and how they set up things, pretty cool. The environment, just being around uh, the atmosphere, man, it's awesome. I hate watching, uh, you know, people play football when I, when I, when I can't play, so uh, especially a championship game like this. Hopkins says his focus right now is getting healthy ahead of his off-season program. As for Miami, DeAndre says he is there to enjoy the food and the culture. And it is so good in Miami. Well, with it being Super Bowl week, it makes sense that Saturday Night Live has an NFL star hosting tomorrow night. Of course, it's Texans' J.J. Watt. He is one of the rare defensive players getting a chance to host the show. Usually, it's been the quarterbacks or the running backs. Watt says there's certainly a similarity between the game this week and the preparations for SNL. I've said all week to these people, I don't think anybody truly understands or appreciates how much goes into making a show go on Saturday Night Live. The script writing, the set building, the costumes. I mean, the people are incredible, and it's just so much fun to be behind the scenes and see it all happen. And we cannot wait to see it happen on TV. Joining him on SNL this week as the musical guest is country star Luke Combs. Turning the page, the United Kingdom begins a new chapter today. Coming up, how people living there are feeling about leaving the European Union. At 10. Good morning. We are following the latest developments in the deadly coronavirus outbreak. The World Health Organization has now declared a global emergency. Take a look at these numbers. This all started in Wuhan, China, and has infected more than 9,800 people around the world. We are told at least 213 people have died so far since that virus was first detected back in December. We know there are at least six cases here in the U.S. And the State Department has announced its highest level warning not to travel to China due to the coronavirus outbreak. This comes, of course, as the number of cases has spiked. NBC's Molly Hunter reports. 
There's a lot of big news on the virus this morning, spreading so fast. The number of confirmed coronavirus cases has gone up more than tenfold in a week. Today, Chinese officials reported the highest death toll in a 24-hour period, pushing that death toll past 200 cases. 18 other countries have also been hit, including, of course, the U.S., where the CDC has announced the first person-to-person -person case in the state. The husband of an Illinois woman is now infected. She traveled to Wuhan. He did not, but was in very close contact with her when she returned. The State Department now issuing a brand new warning telling Americans not to travel to China right now, raising the advisory level to level four or red, its highest alert, saying travelers should be prepared for travel restrictions to go into effect with little or no advance notice. Adding that many commercial carriers have reduced or suspended flights already. The only people going into Wuhan right now, ground zero, of course, of that virus, a huge army of medical personnel from China's armed forces to help. We're talking supplies, doctors flooding the zone to help contain the virus as much as they can at this point. Molly Hunter, NBC News, London. Developing this midday, the UK is officially leaving the European Union today after 47 years. EU leaders held a news conference this morning, hours before Brexit is finalized. The European Union president says their relationship with the United Kingdom won't be the same. Not much will change as the UK starts an 11-month transition period. People living there have mixed emotions about it. It's a very sad day. <laughs> I'm very upset that we're leaving the European Union and I simply wish it didn't happen. I think it's the beginning of just more and more frustration. I come to London to celebrate uh, the Brexit with uh, Brexiters. And uh, it's, uh, we are very happy in France because uh, in France we are very many Frexiters. And so we are here to to the celebration. There's a new deadline. The end of 2020 marks the close of the transition period. Until then, the UK is out of the EU, but still following its rules. All right, Friday morning. It's a little gloomy out, but it's going to be little. beautiful yeah. for the Super right. Bowl party. It's all about the timing, and the timing here is perfect. Our weekend is going to be beautiful, a nice warm up, sunny skies. If you prefer the winter temperatures, don't worry. I have that for you as well. I know here in Houston we have both groups, and everyone's going to be happy when they see that 10 day forecast. Let's take you to where our temperatures are right now. A little cool, right? Yes. Yeah, sunshine would be nice because at least it would warm us up. So we're in the 50s right now. Uh, 50 54 degrees currently here in Houston. To the north of town, we're still holding on to the upper 40s in Huntsville, also in Navasota. 56 degrees currently in Pearland, and Galveston is currently at 57 degrees. Our winds are coming in straight from the north, and that's going to continue to pull in the relatively cooler air. Temperatures are below average for this time of year, but at least we are dry. We'll top off around 60 degrees today, even late in the afternoon, closer to 4 p.m. We'll probably carve out a little bit of sunshine, especially the farther you live to the west. We've been tracking this area of low pressure uh, to the south of us and it's clearing out to the east. So if you live farther out to the west, you're going to tap into that sunshine a little quicker. Uh, let's talk about these afternoon highs. So again, they are slightly below average for this time of year. We typically would be in the mid 60s. We're expecting that mid to upper 50s to the north of town, about 60 degrees here in town. Similar conditions down to the coast. Now, as I said, we have been tracking an area of low pressure to the south of us. Uh, you can see the cloud cover moving over on satellite, but all the rain has moved on out and really stayed offshore. So we're going to be dry as we head into our weekend forecast. Area of high pressure is going to drop in here, clear out the skies. Tomorrow we get back to the mid 60s. By Sunday we're talking 70s. Beautiful weather for Super Bowl Sunday parties. Now as we head into the beginning of next week we hold on to the mild air but we start to work the clouds back into the weather picture and also we'll see a few scattered showers. They're ahead of a cold front and that cold front's going to arrive during the middle part of the work week. It's quite a doozy. There's a lot of cold air behind this cold front. We're going to get a taste of that and in North Texas they're talking about winter weather there snow and sleet possible for them. For us, it's a complete rain story, and it looks like the rain is out of here before the cold air arrives. You need both of those things exactly at the same time for sleet and snow. Doesn't look to be in the mix for us this time. Of course, we'll let you know if things change, but for right now, looks like we'll have those rain showers and a few thunderstorms on Wednesday. We'll dry things out, and then the temperatures will drop. And we're talking about 50s for our afternoon highs and 30s for our overnight temperatures. Wouldn't be surprised if we saw a light freeze to the north of town. Definitely a little taste of, you know, the fact that it's February next week. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, we're not quite there to the heat. There's plenty of it to come. So enjoy the cool air while we have it.
We will. Britta, thanks so much. Extra cash tax filing season is underway. How you can score some extra money in your pocket. And Apple is making it easier for you to get around what they're adding to the Map app. And Parkway. Good morning. In Consumer News, Apple has rolled out a redesigned version of its maps. Apple says it's faster with more accurate navigation and comprehensive views of roads, buildings, parks, airports, malls, and much more. The Apple, the maps of the airport and the malls even take you inside and you can find the individual stores. Pretty neat there. Apple said this new version will roll out across Europe in the coming months. Today is a chance for you to score some extra money in your pocket. Tax filing season is now in full swing and we don't want you leaving anything on the table. Today is Earned Income Tax Credit Awareness Day. According to a survey by Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, 44% of people who make less than $40,000 a year don't know they may qualify for the EITC. The tax credit can be used to pay down debt or put away for a rainy day, but workers must file a tax return and claim the credit to receive it. Amazon's investment in one-day shipping may be paying off. The company says it now has 150 million Prime subscribers worldwide. That's a huge jump from 100 million that it announced back in 2018. Amazon CEO Jeff Bezos says the number of items delivered to customers in the U.S. with Prime's one-day, same-day shipping more than quadrupled in the fourth quarter. Wow. Honoring an NBA legend, local students pay their respects to Kobe Bryant and the others killed in a helicopter crash. Coming up, how they're remembering his legacy. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez. If you had a hard time sleeping because you couldn't stop moving or kicking your legs, you may have restless leg syndrome. How to know if you have it, coming up. Now here's Channel 2's Bill Spencer with a story you'll see all new tonight at 10. It was supposed to be the best Christmas present 12-year-old Sarah Harris ever got. But within hours, that dog was very sick. And just three days later, Sarah's new puppy was dead. Her parents blamed the dog seller, who charged them more than $2,000. Stop hurting people. Stop stealing their money. Channel 2 Investigates looks at the complaints from families who say this woman took their money and broke their hearts by selling very sick dogs. Tonight at 10 org to do. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News Midday. Good morning. Tonight, Andy here with a look at some of our top stories on this Friday. A judge has granted an emergency motion from lawyers representing people in the Watson grinding and manufacturing explosion. Yeah, they want to stop the city of Houston from removing evidence from the scene. ATF officials have finished their investigation and the city is expected to take over. Lawyers don't object to the investigation, but are asking the city not to remove any evidence during its investigation. The 16-year-old suspect accused of killing a Bel Air High School student earlier this month will remain behind bars. A judge made that decision this morning. 19-year-old Cesar Cortez was killed while he was in a JROTC building. The judge declared the suspect is a danger to himself and others. There will be another hearing in two weeks to see if the accused shooter can be released to his mother. The mother of Heidi Broussard, the woman kidnapped and murdered, opens up for the first time since her, da her daughter's body was found in Houston. Police believe Broussard was killed by a close friend who wanted to steal her baby. I mean, you can't explain in words how you really feel. I mean, your heart is overwhelmed, but at the same time, <sighs> my daughter was gone. Tonight, Dateline reveals an inside look at the case, making national headlines. It airs right here on Channel 2 at 9 o'clock. A police investigation is now underway in El Campo. That's where investigators say one body has been found and a woman was shot right in the middle of a house fire. This all happened at Olive and Taylor Streets. Officers say 21-year-old Cater Sparks called 911 this morning saying she'd been shot. When they arrived on the scene, the home that she was in 
was engulfed in flames. Firefighters say they later found a body inside of that home. Family members believe it is that of 23-year-old Kashan Riggins. As of right now, it's unclear who shot the woman and how the person inside that home died. Tributes continue to pour in days after NBA star Kobe Bryant was killed in a helicopter crash. His 13-year-old daughter and seven others also died. Today, Legacy School of Sports Sciences held a balloon release in their honor. High school and middle school students gathered early this morning for a moment of silence, followed by the balloon release with yellow and purple balloons, the colors of his team, the Los Angeles Lakers. The president of PETA is calling for Puxatawney Phil to retire and replace it with an animatronic ahead of Sunday's prediction. But now the Groundhog's caretakers, well, they're not having it. PETA says groundhogs are prey species and they don't like being around humans, adding that groundhogs should live in a natural habitat in the wild. However, the president of the Groundhog Club says that Phil is very well taken care of. And if PETA does not believe that, they should come see for themselves. How can you criticize us for things we do when you haven't came, you have never come and observed what we do do? Come and see what we do, and if we do disapprove of things that, uh, you, that you think we should, then we'll try to correct it. The club says Groundhog Day will continue for many years to come. The impeachment trial of President Trump could come to an end today after several days of arguments. The Senate is expected to hold four hours of debate and then vote on whether the Senate should seek witnesses and documents. Camila Bernal explains from Capitol Hill. 16 hours and 42 minutes remaining, 7 hours and 53 minutes remaining, 15 hours and 33 minutes remaining. After two weeks of arguments, President Trump much closer to an acquittal. We, the American people, are happier. The Senate will now consider witnesses the most awaited and talked about portion of the trial. And a reasonable accommodation would be, we'll take one week, you'll continue with the business in the Senate, uh, we'll do the depositions and then we'll come back and we'll present to you uh, what the witnesses had to say in those depositions. The managers and the president's defense will have four hours of debate on whether to consider witnesses. After that, it's unclear if or how many motions the Democrats may offer. They shouldn't need any more. If that's the case that they brought to us, I think it's time to vote. I'm ready to vote. Yet Democrats continue to ask for witnesses. They need at least four Republican senators to side with them in order to have the 51 vote majority. But after a late night decision to vote no on witnesses by Republican Senator Lamar Alexander, it could end in a tie, meaning the vote would likely fail. The Senate may have it the first impeachment trial in history uh, that have no witnesses at all. If the vote on witnesses is defeated, the next vote could be to dismiss all charges. In Washington, I'm Camila Barnell reporting. Happening today, a major construction project at the busy DPS office will begin. Crews will begin renovations on the parking lot at the Houston Gessner Mega Center. Officials are encouraging customers to visit the other DPS locations due to the lack of parking that will be available during the construction. This project is supposed to last until May. Got some nice changes on the way just in time for the weekend. I know, looking forward to that because it has been really chilly lately and really gloomy, Kimbra. Yeah, and at least we're not carrying umbrellas, right? I mean, True. so it's cool. True. So I'm always looking for that uh, silver lining. Look outside right now. Southwest Freeway 50s right now. 50 at Bush, 54 there. Katy, 53. 58 in Galveston. Here's what we have planned for you today. Mostly cloudy skies today in the 50s. Tonight, cooling into the 40s and the upper 30s. So it's going to be chilly when you go out tomorrow morning. This weekend, all weekend long 60s and 70s in sunshine look at the rest of the temperatures around the coolest are to the west 51 in Brenham Columbus in that not reporting but 51 in Warden as well the winds are all out of the north 12 13 miles an hour along the coast less inland but from the north so they're cooling winds for sure look at the big picture of the state not a lot going on except for when the El Paso area just to the east of El Paso this shows a drier air in the upper levels of the atmosphere that's what's going to be coming in continue to come in and keep us dry for the weekend a little, little system that we had off in the Gulf is moving to our east and not bothering us at all. Woodlands hour by hour, 54 to 56 degrees by 3 o'clock this afternoon. You're going to stay nice and chilly. Clearing skies, we have a lot more sunshine. It'll start to break out. We'll see what's going to be going on the weekend. We'll give you that 10-day forecast just ahead. All right, Cambrell, thanks so much.
They're supposed to give you peace of mind, but these days you hear more and more horror stories about home warranties. That's right. So we dig a little deeper, talking with homeowners, lawmakers, and one of the nation's top prosecutors about the complaints, not only here in Texas, but elsewhere over an industry that many say should have better accountability. Here's Channel 2 investigator Mario Diaz. Our homes now have technological soundtracks with sounds rising to various levels timing is a key factor every time homeowners light up the oven adjust a thermostat or run a cycle they expect everything to flow smoothly that is until something goes out it was July, so it, it was in the 90s. Jenna Getz's air conditioner went out last summer. Things got even hotter when the repairman selected by her home warranty company showed up at the front door. In order to replace your coil that's covered under your home warranty, we have to do all this extra work, adding up to $1,800. Fed up, Getz hired her own repairman who exposed unnecessary charges. They said, you don't need any of this done. The bottom line for Getz surrounding home warranties is simple. Scam. Home warranties are big business nationwide. Millions rely on them. The warranty companies pitch, they have your back when things break down. The biggest concern I have about this is that people are purchasing this product with an expectation that it's going to be there when they need it. Uh, and, and that actually ends up not being the case. Representative Tom Oliverson oversees insurance in Texas as vice chair of the House Insurance Committee at the Capitol. It sounded like insurance, so we assumed that it was the Department of Insurance, but it turns out that it's not. And that is the problem for thousands of homeowners. Exactly who is in charge of home warranties in Texas? Uh, it's apparently the Real Estate Commission, so uh, I guess um, that's a problem. The Texas Real Estate Commission received more than 1,000 home warranty complaints from 2010 to 2019. They admit to being limited in disciplinary action they can take. Channel 2 Investigates made multiple interview requests with TREC leadership, but no one was available. Those we have spoken with tell us the battle to have a home warranty company address a specific problem can be quite challenging. A consumer's desert of sorts, where customers are left high and dry. However, there is one lawman out west who is taking up the fight for the little guy. Someone needs to sue him. Mark Bronovich is Arizona's attorney general. Last October, he filed a lawsuit against Choice Home Warranty. The New Jersey-based company has warranty in its name. Benefits of a home warranty detailed on its website. Yet Choice Home Warranty admits it doesn't actually sell home warranties, but rather service contracts. Do you view these 33 pages as a lawsuit or as an indictment on the industry? To me, that's about sending a message to other companies like this, that if you're going to scam people, if you're going to rip them off, or you're gonna, if you are making misrepresentations, you will be held accountable. Is this a blueprint for other attorney generals nationwide? I would not be surprised if you don't see other AGs taking action. Sending a legal chill through the industry, something Jenna Getz is in favor of. She feels home warranty companies need stricter oversight to protect others. I know that I'm not the only one. I know that this is happening every day to all types of people. And I feel bad for the people that are getting taken advantage of. The Texas Real Estate Commission is not the only one receiving complaints. The Attorney General's office in Austin confirms the Channel 2 investigates. They have logged more than 500 complaints since 2010. So what are some tips when looking for a home warranty company? Consumer Reports says check current warranty status on appliances as they may still be covered. Don't forget that some credit cards offer extended warranties as well. Read the terms of conditions carefully to know exactly what is covered and know the payment limits as some plans do have caps. Just a few tips there to protect yourself as you navigate the challenges of a home warranty. Mario Diaz, Channel 2 Investigates.
Important. Thank you, Mario. Well, Billy Joel targeted in a robbery scheme. Now police are looking for who did it. Coming up, what the thief stole and what security experts say might have happened. And up close and personal, the new Taylor Swift documentary is available to stream today. The secret she's sharing with her fans. Here's a live look at Wall Street as we head into break. NASCAR driver John Andretti lost his battle with colon cancer. His uncle was racing legend Mario Andretti. Andretti Autosport tweeted a statement honoring John's genuine spirit of helping others first and himself second. Andretti spent most of his racing career in NASCAR's top series, running nearly 400 races. He won twice in 1997 and 1999. John Andretti announced he had stage four colon cancer in 2017. He was 56 years old. Billy Joel, the iconic singer of Piano Man, is trying to get his stuff back after someone broke into his $33 million home. Police in Long Island have not released a suspect description right now because they are still investigating this. It happened earlier this week when the singer wasn't home. Center Island is a village in Oyster Bay. Now there is only one way in and one way out of the village. Security experts say there could have been a number of scenarios. It could also be an inside job, meaning a former employee or staff member uh, that was assigned to the property, that knows the ins and outs of the property and the schedule of when people are there. Police say the suspect damaged a garage door, home office, and 12 of his motorcycles. Taylor Swift is now giving fans a more personal view of her life. Her documentary, Miss Americana, starts streaming today on Netflix. The film made a strong impression when it debuted at the Sundance Film Festival last week. Swift talks about the changes in her life and at one point talks about overcoming an eating disorder. Miss Americana is also coming to select theaters. Elton John had to leave his concert and fans a little bit early. You can see why. Wow, yeah, clearly. Just getting dumped on by all that rain. It started to pour at Rockford Wines. The famous singer was in the middle of his song when the staff had to cover him with some type of blanket to keep him from getting wet. I don't think it's doing all that no. good. The wind picked up there as well. Uh, Elton John, by the way, is on his global farewell yellow brick road tour. Well, it is an all out battle where there can only be one winner. We're not talking about the Super Bowl, but a new movie starring Gossip Girl's Blake Lively. Raphael Seth has that and more in the box office preview. I need your help to find the ones who did this. I've got nothing to lose. Blake Lively marches to the beat of her own drum in the rhythm section. She plays a wife and mother who's just lost her family in a plane crash. Her life no longer seems worth living until she finds out the disaster was not an accident, which turns the grieving mom into a motivated mercenary seeking revenge at any cost. The rhythm section is rated R. Entry-level jobs in this industry are tough, right? Long hours. Julia Garner does the dirty work in The Assistant. The Emmy winner plays a recent college graduate brought on as an entry-level hire for a powerful movie producer. But beyond the regular newbie work like fetching coffee and ordering lunch, Garner becomes increasingly aware that she's complicit in a systematic abuse of power. The Assistant is rated R. I'm called Gretel, and this rough one here is my brother Hansel. Siblings find themselves in a hairy situation in Gretel and Hansel. This take on the classic fairy tale follows a homeless sister and brother searching for food, but when they feast their eyes on a cottage in the woods with a buffet on the table, the two think maybe their prayers have been answered. But by whom? Gretel and Hansel is rated PG-13. That's the box office preview. Raphael Seth, NBC News. Getting ready to slide into the weekend, uh, and we're hoping it's going to be nice and bright. It's going to be nice and bright. For Bill Bias, it's going to be the last weekend of work here. I know. So he's going to be done tonight. Yes. And we got folks on the Click Two Pins family. Text the chicken says, you know, when text the chicken chimes in, you know, you got to take that seriously, right? Text says, oh. happy Friday. Y'all wishing Bill a happy retirement. Oh. Oh, Very he's nice. You really appreciate that. And here's Psycho Granny saying, in honor oh, of Bill's retirement, a multifaceted sunset. 
for multifaceted She sends in icon. the best pictures. Seriously. Yeah. She's on top of it. Thank you, Psycho. Appreciate it. No, Bill <laughs> does as well. Look out at Galveston. You see the Pleasure Pier. A few folks walking on the beach there. I see sun. Oh, I see blue sky. Look at that blue sky. It's starting to happen. That's a good thing. 58 degrees, north winds 13 miles an hour. Here's a Kaplan Sinus relief camera shot looking toward the beautiful high, the high rises in downtown Houston. Beautiful shot there. Overcast skies for the most part. 55 degrees, north winds at 9. Throughout the area, everybody's still in the 50s. 52 in Brenham, Bryan College Station, 52. Everybody else in the mid-50s with those winds from the north. They will continue to be from the north for the next couple of days anyway. Here's a satellite radar shot showing the rain that's off to our east. Some of this would have been a couple of days, 10 days ago. We're looking at this and said, we may have some rain on Friday, but I told you Saturday there's a chance for this not to be around, and it is not around. So we're happy about that. Upper-level winds continue to come from that Pacific, and so we're going to see some warmer temperatures coming up going forward here. Futurecast model today, though, shows shows clouds that are there it does show a couple of sprinkles it's just going kind to of sprinkle on your windshield maybe clouds are still there this afternoon we'll see those clouds getting out of here for tonight and tomorrow and that means we have sunny skies going into saturday now the rest of the weekend going forward here we have sunday high pressure down there super bowl weekend of course temperatures are in the 70s high pressure continues to move to the east nice and warm going into sunday and then we start to see that cold air coming in we got a front that's going to be sliding in midweek but look it goes on for Tuesday still in the 70s. We we'll get that high pressure impact, really the flow coming in from the Gulf, making it nice and warm. That cold air is going to slide on down, though, by Wednesday. We'll start to see a lot of cold air to the north. We'll be on the, quote, warm side of that, although our temperatures will be dropping as a result of that. Here's exact track radar. Wonderful. I think we like that. Hour by hour today. Going to be about 60 degrees for your high temperature. Don't have any rain. You may get a spritz or so, but that's about it. Looking at that 10-day forecast, remember what we talked about, those 70s? Remember now, no, no rain to speak of the rest of the day or tomorrow or Sunday. And then going into Monday, about a 20% chance. Going into Tuesday, then we go whoop. Temperature drops. We go down in the 40s and 30s as we get toward the end of next week. Uh, of course, we get some rain that comes along with that too on Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But look at the end of week. With cool, yes, for those who want to get that winter wardrobe out. But for the most part, nice week going ahead. Yeah, nice. Yeah. This weekend especially. Yes. Ambra, thanks so Looking much. Looking forward to that. All right. Well, we've got some breaking news right now. Live look at the Mar-a-Lago Resort in Palm Beach, Florida. A large police presence out there. Local media reporting there was some sort of incident near a security checkpoint. You can see it zoomed back, actually, a helicopter shot. We are working to find out if anyone there was hurt. President Trump is scheduled to spend the Super Bowl weekend in Palm Beach. It looks like they're zooming up maybe now. We'll bring you any updates on air and online at clicktohouston.com. You can see a barricade looks like there. Coming up, how to know if you have restless leg syndrome and what can be done about it. Treatments for restless leg syndrome have basically been at a standstill for decades, leaving some patients suffering without any new hope. Health reporter Haley Hernandez explains. Patients with restless legs have an uncontrollable urge to move and kick their legs. Sometimes it's painful and it's usually difficult to sleep. The most frustrating part for some people is that there's no new treatments. Restless legs can be uncomfortable and uncontrollable. The kicking, moving, heebie-jeebie jumping feeling can make it hard to sleep or sit still at all. Dr. William Ondo at Houston Methodist Hospital says current medications on the market are effective, but there hasn't been anything new in decades. And for people who've been taking them for that long, they can stop working. So these days I end up spending more time dealing with augmentation for people that had been successfully treated on these medicines, much more than I see patients that have never been on them at all. And none of the medications are without side effects. We're never thrilled about using these chronically, but methadone in particular can be a very effective medicine. Medications are taken at night when symptoms are most noticeable. During the day, the doctor says movement and intense concentration can relieve the discomfort. A video game sometimes can improve RLS. Being angry, okay, can improve RLS. Getting into an argument can improve RLS. Sex can improve RLS, 
okay? Unfortunately, things like just like reading or watching TV, even if it's a fairly intense show, generally don't help RLS. So who gets restless legs? Dr. Ando says it partially has to do with genetics. It may have to do with iron deficiency. Usually women are most at risk, people in kidney failure, and pregnant women. It typically gets worse over the years until old age. We're not sure exactly why that is, but again, it may have to do with the fact that when you get very old in your 80s and 90s, your, your brain iron actually starts to go way up. That's often thought to be a bad thing, but in RLS it may be a good thing. There's no medical test for restless legs, but there are other ways to determine if you have it. We're putting information on click2houston.com that may help your doctor get an idea of what you're experiencing. Check that out in the health section. I'm health reporter Haley Hernandez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Live from KPRC, this is Channel 2 News at noon. All eyes on Capitol Hill for what could possibly be the final day in the impeachment trial. An NBC special report carrying the proceedings will begin momentarily. When the trial gavels in, the Senate will spend four hours debating. Then it's time for a critical vote on whether or not to present additional evidence and witnesses. Right now it appears the GOP has enough votes to block new witnesses. If those witnesses are blocked, the Senate could very well move into a final vote of guilt or innocence. But Democrats will have the ability to amend and debate such a motion. Want to go right now to NBC's special report. This is an NBC News special report. The trial of Donald J. Trump. Here is